So we have two charges, and what we're going to do is we are going to try and find out the electric potential at the location of the dot over here, 14 micrometers away from Q1 and 20 micrometers away from Q2. Each one of these charges supplies electric potential, and then we can put the two potentials together. So let's just start simple and find out the two electric potentials. So if I go to my first charge over here, Q1, I can calculate the electric potential, which is KQ1 over R, and I can calculate the electric potential due to this charge at that location. Now, if I do that, I can find out that this charge has provided a potential of about 4.89 times 10 to the 6 volts of electric potential. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing to for Q2. So, if I do the exact same thing for Q2, and I find my electric potential from that one, same type of calculation, KQ over R, and if I do that, I can find out that my second charge is supplying a potential of negative 3.60 times 10 to the 6 volts. So there's my two potentials. Now, the nice thing is all I have to do is take those two potentials and put them together. And the nice thing about potential is it's a scalar quantity. Still hang on to positives and negatives due to the nature of the charges, but I don't have to make any triangles or do any trig or any Pythagoras. So if I put those two together, I can get my total voltage at that location. And if I do that, I can find that my total voltage at that point is 1.29 times 10 to the 6 volts. And that is my total electric potential at this location. Now, that total potential can be used to find potential energy, but only if something is put there. So let's take an electron and put an electron there. And if I put an electron there, that electron will then have potential energy, which can then cause it to move. So let's see if we can find out the potential energy of the electron. Now, a really simple way to do that might be to find the potential energy, which of course is KQQ over R. And I can do that for Q1 and the electron, and then do that for Q, the electron in Q2, and then take those two energies and put them together. But I don't need to do that because that right there is the electric potential from each one of those charges. I've already done this part already. So an easier way to do it would to be instead just use the expression energy is equal to QV. I have the total voltage. I can put that in there. And if I put the total voltage and then introduce the electron, that will give me my total energy for my electron. So let's do that. So I take my Q value, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. It's a negative charge. And I multiply that by my total voltage. And I can find that my electron would have a total potential energy of negative 2.1 times 10 to the negative 13 joules. Now, a really, really common thing to do for this would then maybe change the kinetic energy or do something else. But another really common thing that I can actually do is maybe that electron moves and maybe that electron would move from there to there well if it moves from there to there to do that requires work and what you could do is find the potential energy at this location find the potential energy at this location and then the work done would be the change in potential energy and once you had that you could find out the average force that was used to move from one place to the other there's a few other things you could do like find speeds using kinetic energy and stuff like that so Change in energy is the key for a lot of this type of stuff if the radius is changing. Okay, just like when we do like gravity. If the radius is constant, you're probably using forces. If a radius changes, you're probably going to use energies. And here, to move from here to there is a changing radius for both Q1 and Q2. So using energies would be a way better way to stall for something like V or for, in terms of speed, and for force and work and all that type of stuff.